have you ever had an experience with a demonic entity? Yeah. And I saw a vision real quick of you specifically seeing like an encountering like a big demon. Like was it around the age of ten or? Yeah. Is that crazy how I know that? Yeah. It's a little weird. We were evangelizing in San Diego, and the Lord led us to go to expose some witchcraft. We gonna go to a witchcraft store, man. It's the one. We about to go knock down some idols right now. We drove to the closest witchcraft store and interviewed a full-blown witch. You would not believe how the Holy Spirit moved and touched her. The vision just came randomly again. Are you still kind of dealing with that sleep paralysis sometimes? Yeah, I was able to turn it into astral projection. I've had thousands of dollars worth of crystals and different things. The sleep paralysis didn't stop until I came to the Lord, got delivered from demons. The spirit of suicide comes in your life. Have you cut yourself? Yeah. I seen a vision of you cutting yourself. The Lord wants to free you of that. So all you have to do is believe that he did that and he rose from the dead and give your life to him and you surrender to him and he will... We are in San Diego and we're about to go into a witchcraft store and expose darkness. I'm actually on my Metaverse Ray-Bans and we're on Instagram Live. Yahweh hates witchcraft. The Lord is about to move. Holy Spirit, have your way. Let's get it. So hey guys, we're um what's the name of the shop again? Crystal Blue Vibrations. Crystal Blue Vibrations. Your name's what again? Isabel. How you doing? What's your name? Lucas, my name is Rich, man. Nice the to meet owner. you. So uh, we're, we were just asking um, if we could uh, vlog in here. We're vloggers, and we just okay. we travel around the world. Okay. So what's this? Like, what? What is that? A mushroom? That's a wooden mushroom. Yeah. What does it represent to you, or in general? Um. Well, just psychedelic and like natural medicine. So I've studied a little bit. Like the word psyche comes from psychology, which is like the study of the mind, the brain, like the soul, which is like the mind, will, and emotions. So you believe like these mushrooms um, allow you to access a different realm, like a spiritual realm? Yeah, I believe so. Um, our ancestors have been using them and generations have been using them for hundreds and thousands of years. And if they knew what they were doing and they passed that on to us, then... Have you ever used it before? Um, yeah, I have. And what, what type of experience did you have? I was able to see into like my past life. So you believe that in reincarnation, like multiple lives? Yes, I do. Like lessons and our soul purpose and... Oh, like our soul purpose for like while we're here, like I guess we're like learning. Mm -hmm. And like we come back into a new life to learn new things. Yeah. So what are we, try what are we learning? to just progress our soul, move forward. Like, do you think that, like, that there's like good and bad karma? That's a tough question. I wouldn't say there's necessarily bad, but I think there is evil. Okay, so you think there's like evil, like, do you believe in karma? Yeah. So then there, like, isn't it karma is, is like good and bad, right? Yeah. According to that, to that, to that uh, belief, like that religion? I think it's all about intention. What, what do you put into, what is your purpose and what you're doing? Is it to help yourself? Mm -hmm even if it hurts people around you or is it to help yourself so that you can help others okay and, and don't, don't do you believe that some people have the right intention in their heart like they believe what they're doing is right but they're wrong yeah definitely what, what spiritual law like defines like the judgment like of what it is wrong and what's right because there has to be something because of karma like some type of law in the system like in the record in the realm of the spirit like like a higher power that's already figured this out I mean, our connection to the divine. Because look at what, like, what's happening in Israel. Like, people, the Hamas, like, they're, they're, they're murdering people. Like, it's, we know that. I think that's terrible. That's wrong. Like, but they think because they're doing it for their God, it's right. Yeah, and that's where religion can be really tricky. Even this is essentially a religion. It's a systematic, yeah, uh, spirituality. I mean, re all religions are spiritual. Mm -hmm. But this is like a, a belief system. Like, and it's like, and it's, you're constantly doing it, like, religiously. So like, there's so many religions, right? But like, like you said, like, like, like people do in the name of religion will do crazy things. Like I know, like in voodoo, I've heard of them doing like human sacrifices, animal sacrifices, like even in Wiccan and different things like that, where they take people out into the woods and they sacrifice them. They think it's for the right reason onto their deity, and it stems from a lot of this too. Like I, from what I've studied so far, like a lot of this, like the same stuff, it's, it stems from it, and it's it's kind of crazy. Like we got to really know what we're practicing and what we're doing. Do you do you get a lot of dreams at night? Yeah. Like a lot, like, and you've had some crazy experience with like, have you ever had an experience with a demonic entity? Yeah, um, I actually grew up with sleep paralysis since I was like I, a kid. I felt that, like I yeah. felt like you had a, a lot of sleep paralysis and I saw a vision real quick of you specifically seeing like an, an encountering like a big demon, like a pretty big one. Yeah. When you were very small, like was it around the age of 10 or, 10 or 11? Yeah. Is that crazy how I know that? Yeah, it's a little weird. Yeah. I seen the spirit coming over you like this and you were like on your bed like this facing it and it was like a big demon, mm -hmm. dark shadow. And you didn't know what to do. Yeah, ever since I was like, yeah, nine to like 14, 15. Yeah, I had a lot of like sleep paralysis, a lot of demonic possessions and a lot of just like negative because I come from like a family of 
energy and like okay. witches and stuff. Mm -hmm. So I think I, that just made me more susceptible. Susceptible to the, to the spirit realm. Yeah. Crazy. Like um, I've had sleep paralysis twice, twice before too, and I encountered that stuff, and it freaked me out. Like I was like, and like, and it's crazy. Like when you think about like the demonic and angelic. What do you think angelic and demonic beings are doing in the realm of the spirit? Um, I think that in names of spirit, there are certain entities and spirits who want to help us grow mm -hmm. and ascend our species help us towards evolution and i think there are spirits who want to take us away who want to take us away from evolution and want to drain our energy and that's where i think the angels and the demons stem because angels vibrate at a higher frequency so they're here to help us and assist us and guide us i think demons are just here to drain us and zap our energy and take our light away from us and do you believe in like astral projection and stuff like that? Yeah. Show, show me some more stuff, like like when it comes to that stuff, like astral projection and all that. Like, um, there's a lot of stones that are used for, and a lot of tools that you can use for astral projecting. Okay. Um, this stone is really powerful. This is called Oralite 23. They call it 23 because it has 23 minerals in it, and this can help with astral projection. It can help with sleep paralysis. It can help with dreaming. It helps basically with the third eye and the crown chakra. So connection to God and dreams, because dreams do hold like subliminal messages they do they're, yeah. they're, they're very our deep physical, yeah in our physical world so i okay. think this stone is really powerful scolocyte anytime a little kid comes up to me and it's like i'm having nightmares or i have a hard time sleeping i'll give them this stone this mm -hmm. is what it looks like in the like polished but if you look at it raw it's really oh. cool it looks like these like little needles so imagine how hard it is to get that out of the ground Wow, that vision just came randomly again. Are you still kind of dealing with that sleep paralysis sometimes? Yeah. I just saw in the spirit like like it's happening regularly, and you're like you're trying to figure it out, like how to beat it. Um. Well, it stopped. It went away for a while. And then it came so right back. It. Yeah, and it came back. I was able to turn it into astral projection, so now I can astral project, and also, um, I'm very aware of my dreams, and I know when I'm dreaming. Every time I'm dreaming, I know I'm dreaming. I'm like, oh, I'm dreaming. Cool. Let's see what happens. Wow. And when you ask to project, where do you go? It depends. Usually it's sometimes it's just like a lucid dream where I have a dream mm -hmm. and I'm able to just control the dream. Mm -hmm. um, I believe in a higher power, too. Mm -hmm. And um, I believe that the higher power that, that I believe in wants to just give you good energy and just and just a blessing. And I, and I believe that you, you believe in a God, a higher power like I do, mm -hmm. which is powerful. And my, the name of my higher power is Yahweh. And I actually was deep into voodoo. Like I was actually um, before right, this, or yeah, before I was actually very deep. Like I was actually in Haiti, in New Orleans. I was being trained up to be a dual inducted warlock. I've had thousands of dollars worth of crystals and different things. The sleep paralysis didn't stop until I came to the Lord. Got delivered from demons and healed from a disease that I had my entire life for nine years that the doctors couldn't heal. I just want to pray that you would encounter my uh, the Holy Spirit. So how I do it, and I just just to show you that it's not me, is I, I'm gonna back up and pray for you. Love, peace, blessings, and joy and protection. Can I do that? And can you be? Can you do one thing for me? Mm -hmm. Be honest and let me know if you truly experience something. Okay. If you don't, you don't. You could be like, I didn't experience nothing. But if you do, you let me know. Okay. Just say this. Say, Jesus. Jesus. If you're real. If you're real. Encounter me right now. Encounter me right now. All right. In Jesus' name. All right. I'm going to pray. Right now, Holy Spirit, I pray that you touch her right now. I command every unclean spirit, every demon that's been tormenting her with sleep paralysis, come off of her right now in the name of Jesus Christ. I pray right now, Holy Spirit, touch Unwrap, I bind every unclean spirit with the authority in Jesus Christ. Come off of this, this woman. This is God's child. Come off of her right now in the name of Jesus. Leave by fire right now in Jesus' name. Hey, what did you feel? Just like tingling. Tingling? Yeah. Where? Like my toes and like my shoulders. In your, in your shoulders? Mm -hmm. So it's, it's kind of crazy, right? Yeah, it's interesting. So the simple gospel is it's not religion. Religion is actually killing people. It's about relationship with the highest power. Yeah. And he, he's, actually been, he's actually been drawing you in. It's like, how do I explain this? The voodoo, it was a lot of works. I had to buy a lot of crystals, a lot of things, baths. I had to, like a lot of works. But then I, when, you, when, you, when you have the encounter with Christ and you give your life to him, like truly, man, you're called to be a prophetess. And God wants to use you for healing to help people that to other women who have been abused and molested and, and raped and all these things that a lot of women go through. Have you ever dealt with that? In certain relationships, yeah. Being with men who were very yeah. murderous, anger, and abusive and would keep you bound. The spirit of suicide comes in your life. And have you cut yourself? Yeah. I seen a vision of you cutting yourself and you didn't know why and you were doing it because it felt good. I'm going to tell you something. That's a spirit. The Lord wants to free you of that. He loves you. Have you ever heard the gospel of Jesus Christ? Mm -hmm. I, really quick. No, I haven't. It's very simple. Have you sinned before? I'm sure I have. Yeah. I have to. We all have. Yeah. 
Imagine if sin was on your back, like it'd be pretty heavy. Yeah. We all we all can't we we all living in this plane, this physical realm, we cannot not sin. We're living in bodies of flesh that cause us to sin. Exactly. We fell in the garden with Adam and Eve. Like when they ate from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. That's when they allowed death and an expiration date in our body and I, we lost relationship with God. An all powerful God, the highest power, came into a human vessel, lived the perfect life, was love, casted out devils, healed the sick, moved in miracles, signs and wonders, and did all that to prove the kingdom of heaven is here. Now, the one that's been prophesied for all these thousands of years is here right now. And people believe, some people didn't. The religious people hated him. He went, he, he got scourged, whipped, lashed, crowned of thorns in his head, went through physical torture, then spiritual, took all the sins from the past, present, and future on his back. He went up on the cross and became a sacrifice. His blood had to be shed. Why? Because blood is life. It's a spiritual law. When you go to the doctors and you're sick and you ask them to figure it out, they take your blood and they figure everything out. You can't, everything pumps with blood. So blood is life and sin is death. So he had to shed, to shed his blood in order for that to happen. So all you have to do is believe that he did that and he rose from the dead and give your life to him and you surrender to him and he will he will fill you with a power that you've never experienced in your life. And he loves you. He loves you a lot. So can I, can I pray for you real quick one more time? I just pray, Father God, that you plant a good seed for my sister today. I pray today, Lord, that you would just start guiding her to more truth, more light, more love. Father, have angels surrounding her right now, good angels from the third heaven, from you, Yahweh, that will protect her from all evil, Lord. Today, everything changes for her and her mother and her family. In Jesus' name, amen. What did you feel in this interview? It was a good conversation, good understanding. Did you feel like I was trying to force anything on you? I mean, I can't say no, but I can't say yes. I don't think you were forcing anything on me. You were just sharing. Yeah, just sharing. a little unsolicited. I wasn't expecting. I didn't know what to expect. At the end of the day, everything happens for a reason, and you clearly were put here for a reason. You have a light on you. You have a light on you. You're different. You're called to be a seer. S-E-E-R. Seer. You ever heard about that? Mm-mm. Look it up. A prophet seer for the Lord. He's calling you in his end times. Everything is about to shift now. God bless you. God bless you, Lucas. Mission accomplished. What just happened was the love of God and the truth of God encountered this this um this woman who's called to be a prophetess, a seer, and we just declare life over her. I want all of you to pray for Isabel. I believe she's going to encounter the Lord Jesus Christ and repent of all the witchcraft. God's already been drawing her in. The Bible says no one comes to the Son unless the Father draws him in. Hey, Pastor Benji and Fred held it down. The owner was trying to stop the interview, and it's crazy because everything was straight until I started preaching the gospel. The minute I started preaching the gospel, he tried to come out. Pastor Benji blocked him. Fred blocked him. We got in. We prayed. She encountered the Holy Spirit, the presence of God. She, 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 she said she already been like going through certain things. I mean, I'm telling you, words of knowledge flowed. God is going to encounter her in a major way. Pray for Isabel. And if you prayed for Isabel, I want you to comment down below and look, go share this video with all your friends, all your family. Go show them how real the power and the love of God is. We have to preach the gospel with wisdom, my brothers and my sisters. Love and wisdom and power. Because we just went into the enemy's camp. But when you have love, they can't move outside of that. And them demons can only operate when we start getting angry, religious, condemning. When we start saying, ah, like that's when he can say, get out, call the cops. That's when the devil has a field day and he loves it. But when you're moving in love and you ask them, hey, can I record? And they say, yes, all these things. He doesn't even realize that by the love of God, he just got hit with the what, Pastor Benji? The Uno reverse card. Yeah, I heard it. The Uno reverse card, man. Look, witches and warlocks going into the churches, man. We got to go into these witchcraft stores and we got to let them know what's up. It's Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Again, comment down below if you prayed and any testimony you may have about witchcraft or anything like that that might might encourage somebody because people really do read these comments. Make sure to hit the bell icon for notifications so you can get notified. Like the video, subscribe to the channel, and again, go share this with everybody you know because as these videos are shared and liked and commented, that's how the algorithm runs up and we can spread the light of Christ to the world, man. There's too much darkness being spread, so go spread that light, man. Be an evangelist on the internet. Digital evangelists stand up. Rise up. Hey, so Pastor Pastor Benji and Fred, as I was doing the interview, I know you guys were pretty much protecting the interview and, and just using wisdom and love. So Pastor um, Benji and Fred, can you just explain what happened? The connection was kind of acting up, so I had to step outside just to see if I can get some connection because we were on Instagram Live. But as I stepped outside, the owner, Lucas, he was out there already calling the cops. You know, I, I don't know what happened, but I guess, you know, he just didn't like what was going on. But as Apostle began to dialogue with the the lady, Isabel, you know, they exchanged a mutual conversation and it just went deeper and it was still about the store. It was still about everything that was going on and it was tied into it. And I let him know that it was almost like he was stumped in a sense because it's true. You know, we displayed everything that was in the store and at the same time conversation 
sparked a whole different avenue. That's just how the Holy Spirit moves. Yeah, he, he tried to come and stop the interview, but we just did it in love. We were just like, we were about to finish up, but he started manifesting, so we just had to give him the love. You can't stop Jesus. You can never stop the move of Jesus ever, in Jesus' name.